This collaborative video is based on an FAQ that was developed by the three regulatory nursing colleges in Alberta, the College and Association of Registered Nurses of Alberta, the College of Licensed Practical Nurses of Alberta, and the College of Registered Psychiatric Nurses of Alberta. My name is Elizabeth Taylor, Director of Regulatory Services for the College of Registered Psychiatric Nurses of Alberta. Presenting along with me are Penny Davis, Policy and Practice Consultant from CARNA, and Glenda Tarnowski, Director of Professional Practice from CLPNA. And now I would like to ask Penny to start us off. Thanks, Elizabeth. The learning objectives for this session include professional responsibilities and accountabilities, the differences between aesthetic and aesthetic procedures, education and training requirements, and documentation, consent, procurement, and storage of medications and substances administered for aesthetic procedures. We'll begin by talking about the scope of practice of a nurse in Alberta. This is outlined in the legislative framework and is further defined by each respective regulatory body. Performing procedures that are not within a nurse's scope of practice can result in significant professional and legal consequences. Alberta RNs, LPNs and RPNs are authorized under regulation and have education to administer medications and substances by injection. An order by an authorized prescriber is required before any nurse can administer Schedule 1 medications or substances such as neuromodulators. The nurse is responsible and accountable to have the required education and experience to carry out the order. Administering dermophilas and neuromodulators such as Botox are post entry level competencies and are not taught in the entry to practice nursing programs. Neuromodulators require a client specific order following an initial assessment by an authorized prescriber such as a physician, dentist or nurse practitioner. As aesthetic nursing procedures pose potential risk to the client, appropriate emergency support should be readily available. The nurse providing an aesthetic procedure uses a skill set comprised of the following competencies. A sensitive and respectful manner of communication, a positive, non-judgmental attitude and caring behaviors, thorough knowledge of anatomy and physiology of the skin and underlying tissue, thorough understanding of the medications and substances to be used, strong analytical skills and clinical competence in this practice area, and provision of honest and factual counseling and advertising. In addition, LPNs are required to have direct or indirect supervision by a physician or nurse practitioner when providing aesthetic nursing procedures within their scope of practice. The physician or nurse practitioner must be trained in dermatology, on-site and available to assist as necessary. An important point of clarity for nurses is to understand aesthetic services, which are considered health services versus aesthetic and personal services. Many aesthetic procedures do not need to be performed by a regulated health professional. For example, facials, waxing, piercing, and tattooing. These would not fall within the definition of nursing or health services, but are included in the personal services regulation under the Public Health Act. When performing these personal services, you cannot use the protected title, nurse, and these hours would not qualify as practice hours. At entry to practice, nurses do not have the competencies or education to administer dermophilas, collagen stimulators, and neuromodulators. Additional education should include anatomy and physiology of the skin and underlying tissue, assessment and knowledge of neuromodulators and dermophilas, and infection prevention and control best practices. 
Each nurse is responsible and accountable to follow best practices to ensure they have the knowledge to practice safely, competently, and ethically. Now I will turn it over to Glenda. Thank you, Penny. Now let's focus on documentation and record keeping. Is it required? Yes, nurses are required to document the care they provide accurately and in a timely, factual, complete, and confidential manner. All documentation and record keeping must adhere to the documentation and privacy requirements as defined by your regulatory body, employer policy, and provincial legislation. Documentation expectations are the same across all practice settings. Documentation is not separate from care and is not optional. It is an integral part of the nurse's practice and an important tool that nurses use to ensure high quality client care. Nurses document holistic, patient-focused care, including relevant components of the nursing process, assessment, nursing diagnosis, plan, implementation, and evaluation. Documentation is evidence that care has been provided and is necessary for communication between healthcare providers, meeting professional and legal requirements, and quality improvement and research. It is very important that the client understand risks, benefits, and expected outcomes of treatment. Before providing an aesthetic nursing procedure, the nurse must obtain informed consent from the client for the specific procedure. Consent must be valid and current and not have been withdrawn at the time of the procedure or treatment. Performing a procedure on a client without informed consent is considered unlawful and can result in professional conduct investigations or criminal charges regardless of whether the client is harmed or not. For consent to be informed, the nurse must explain the intervention, including alternative options, as well as the disclosure of any risks and complications. Consent must be voluntary and cannot be coerced from the client through undue influence or intentional misrepresentation. It's the responsibility of the nurse providing the service to assess the client's ability to understand the nature of the proposed procedure, any risks and complications, and the right of refusal. Consent is only considered valid if the client fully understands what they are consenting to. A procedure can only be provided to a minor when parent or legal guardian consent is obtained prior. The treatment must be mutually agreed upon between the parent or legal guardian and the minor. Consent must be obtained in an ethical manner and documented accordingly. Consent must be re-established if there are any changes to the client's initial care plan or the client has changed their mind. Consent to the proposed procedure needs to be obtained each time the intervention is provided. It's important that the nurse mitigate the risk of complaints and legal action by ensuring that consent is informed and addresses the client's expectations regarding outcomes before any procedure is performed. Additionally, nurses must ensure client safety, which includes preventing health care acquired infections. If you are practicing in a clinic or have a self-employed practice, it is important to use IPNC best practices and follow IPNC policies. The following routine practices are an important component of IPNC and should be used at all times. There should be dedicated hand washing sinks and hand sanitizer stations. You must follow appropriate hand hygiene. Ensuring the appropriate personal protective equipment is used during the procedure. Surfaces and equipment must be cleaned, disinfected, or sterilized appropriately. Single-use devices must only be used once, and any waste, whether general or biomedical, must be disposed of safely and appropriately. There are many IPNC resources available to help ensure the safety of the client and the nurse. Now I'll turn it over to Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Glenda. An important aspect of aesthetic nursing practice is liability protection, which is included in every practicing regulated member's annual registration fees. Those in or considering self-employed practice in partnership with other practitioners or by employing others should contact the regulatory college to determine if additional liability protection is needed.
In Alberta, medication listed on Health Canada's prescription drug list can only be prescribed by authorized regulated health professionals. These include physicians, nurse practitioners, dentists, and pharmacists who have been granted prescribing authority. Authorized prescribers must abide by standards of practice developed by their regulatory college. The standards of practice governing physicians and nurse practitioners require them to personally assess a client prior to providing a prescription. Physicians and nurse practitioners can only prescribe neuromodulators and other medication on Health Canada's prescription drug list when a client assessment has been performed. Physicians can only provide a prescription for office use when they personally will be attending the patients for whom they will provide an order for injection. An office use medication, which is a multi-dose vial, can be used for more than one patient attending a clinic. Neuromodulators, such as Botox, are Schedule I medications and can only be prescribed by an authorized prescriber as outlined in the Government Organization Act and respective health profession regulations. Therefore, it is important for the nurse to confirm the schedule or category of medication being administered. Medications and substances for administration by injection, prescription, or otherwise must be procured through a pharmacy or the pharmaceutical company. Medications and substances procured by other means may not be the correct substance, may be beyond expiration date, or may have been stored inappropriately, thereby altering composition, safety, and efficacy. Pharmaceutical companies may have restrictions on who may procure medications and substances. A nurse should not use another health care professional purely for the purposes of procurement. Nurses need to follow the manufacturer recommendations for storage and handling as outlined in standards, best practice guidelines, and manufacturer recommendations. A reminder that the full FAQ can be found on all three college websites. If you have any questions about this video or resources related to aesthetic nursing practice, please contact your college or see your college website for further information. Thank you for joining us.